over here on my right is what a normal light should look like, right? That's the kind of lighting. But across Phoenix, we are seeing this instead, more purple lights showing up. We're told about 1,200 of these lights started popping up a couple of months ago in the city. That's out of about 100,000 total lights in Phoenix. Now, part of me want to say that they did this because of the mosquitoes, right? But another part of me is wants to say that maybe it's to kind of keep us from seeing certain things if you get what i'm saying yeah you come on look come on look. yeah come on i got you yeah mm. i ain't trying to hide come on all right Oh my god, this man, you're a damn fool, man. What are we doing there? Gotcha, I am tired of y'all asses. Fool me once, goddammit. Alright, we're gonna get Kamal in here. Alright. Kamal! Yeah! Yeah! And you know what is sad? That the 25% of black men that voted for Trump had to do this. They had to be this way. I didn't, because I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, I don't give a damn. Yeah, I'm going to let you know who I'm voting for. I mean, probably, I ain't going to just blurt out and say, yeah, I'm Trump this and Trump that. But if you ask me, I'm going to tell you probably. So, yeah, it was never no issue with me when I told somebody, because you know, you, either you're going to respect it or you're going to keep moving on. You get them the only two choices you got. This a PSA to every black woman that raised that fucking money for Kamala. You raised forty million dollars in one motherfucking night for a campaign for concerts and fucking speeches. You motherfuckers are dumb. You think I'm about to fucking vote with y'all? You spent forty million on concerts. You stupid motherfuckers. I tried to say this without cussing you dumb motherfuckers out. It don't work. And I'm not about to sit there and keep biting my lip. We too damn close to the election. You raised forty million dollars in one night for this motherfucker, and you got a fucking concert and a fucking Beyonce speech, and you happy with that? These the same motherfuckers that pay a thousand dollars for a fucking picture with Chris Brown. You think I'm voting for you? You think I'm voting with you? You gotta be the dumbest motherfucker that ever walked this planet. You just threw my motherfucking money away to people that's already fucking rich. And I, some of these videos are going to be a couple of days old, right? Because I've been had them in my arsenal for a while. These are actually videos I saved. But this goes back to what I was saying about I think that, that people should be tested and before you can get a voter's registration card. It's like how you have to be tested to get a driver's license so we know you can drive. Well, you need to be tested before you can vote so we know you're making a rational decision. and no decency to come out and speak to her supporters. I told y'all in the last videos, I lost all respect for her after that one. Telling you man, the joy and the peace that this Trump administration is about to bring, it's, it's, it is so spiritual, y'all. Because ever since this election day, I've been having this super high emotional, spiritual epiphany. I've been seeing visions. I've just been seeing peace. I've been seeing vibrant, euphoric colors. Because I meditate a lot, man. And in my, in my meditations, I've been seeing just straight, Peace. Hey, mom, Trump's our president. Yeah. Oh, 
thank you, God. Thank you. I've been up here praying and praying. Yeah. 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 Let me see. Let me look. Let me see. No, no, you, you come downstairs if you want. That's what you want, Mama. No, no, I've been praying up here all night. God is a good president that gives a gives a care about America. For right. us. That's us first instead of non-citizens. I thought they said they weren't going to know nothing until tomorrow. No, no, they're, they're celebrating down there. Let's do it. Woo! My mom called me the same way. <laughs> she called me before I could call her. She called me before he even won. And she, she was already, she had already foreseen it. You know, my mom always foreseeing things. And she was just like, your dad would have been so happy and all these different things, man. And when I, that's why I told you, man, I've been on an emotional roller coaster since that day with the excitement of him being elected and, you know, the memories of knowing how my dad would have felt. It's been crazy, man. It's been crazy. It's been hella spiritual. The insanity between Cardi B and Elon Musk is only getting crazier and crazier. Now this whole Twitter beef between these two has come to a complete new level of insanity when Cardi B posts a video of her having a complete and total meltdown in response to everything that is going on, okay? Because Elon Musk absolutely destroys her in the most epic way imaginable. It calls her out for the puppet that she is. It is absolutely fantastic. So all of this started from a couple days ago when Cardi B was at one of Kamala Harris's rallies where she, of course, was one of the great speakers one of the most intellectual people of our time of course cardi b the artist who wrote the song as ben shapiro would call it wet ass p word lmao cardi b's teleprompter was broken and she had no idea what to do for over a minute until someone ran out the stage to give her a phone to read off wholly embarrassing this video is absolutely super cringe to watch but we're gonna get into this who told her campaign managers to bring these people out to support her anyway they really thought that was going to do it. And the sad part about it, you got black women saying that they want to kill black men because they voted for Trump. And the vote by race came out and it showed that more black men voted for Kamala than they did Trump. Only about 12 to 25 percent of the black men voted for Trump. And I'm a part of that 25 to 12 percent. It's Donald Trump at the center. It's the former president who is now comfortable with the levers of power. When he was elected to the presidency in 2016, after covering him for so many years, it was one of the only times I've ever seen shock on his face when he won in 2016, standing in that hotel in New York, because he wasn't prepared for the presidency. He now pr potentially enters the presidency once again, fully comfortable, and he has allies around him who are reflecting the total ideological shift, a new paradigm in American politics. It's the nexus not only of Elon Musk and Donald Trump, but Donald Trump Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Tucker Carlson. What we're seeing tonight is potentially not just the victory of a political campaign, but the emergence of a new power structure in the United States. A whole power structure, because we can't forget about Barron, and who knows the influence this has on him as a young man at only 17, 18 years old, watching his daddy win and be president twice but with a landslide win, bro. I'm just saying, think about that. Even if Trump doesn't run ever again, you gotta think about his sons. They have enough experience in politics and in the White House to know how to run and they are going to continue his legacy and they have kids and their kids kids come on man it does not go on red and blue lines republican or democrat or even so-called nationalism or populist lines this is in the image of trump with his instincts driving everything musk of course will want to work closely with the president on defense policy foreign policy technology financial policy but to be clear based on our reporting and my conversations with trump and others it's him who's driving everything. And those around him, including Musk, I'm told, are highly aware that he comes into this presidency, should he <clears> win, <throat> as someone who is now seen by the Supreme Court as someone who can operate with total power on many fronts with his official acts and will want to use that power and likes having that power. And in this case, the power ain't an evil power. It's a good power, a power that's gonna put this country back in its rightful place and maybe a few steps ahead.
It's crazy. But then I tell y'all, I see a lot of people say, you know what? Kamala, 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 Kamala. But when their faces are turned, I'm voting for Trump. I don't know for sure, but that's supposed to be her after leaving her supporters and not speaking. And as you can see, she looked like she's just tired. I honestly believe that Biden and Kamala never really expected to win. They never wanted to win. I think it was just all for entertainment because the campaign choices that they made, ain't no way they expected to win like that. How old are your granddaughters? They are six and eight. Would you support them to get hormone blockers to become the other gender? I would absolutely support them to get hormone blockers. The idea of one of my granddaughters learning that they're going to start having their period if they don't get their hormones blocked, even though they're identifying and portraying as a male, how horrible that would be. So yes, definitely. If your granddaughter came to you and wanted to get a tattoo, what would you say? That would be more difficult. I always told my three sons, the one thing I ask is, please don't get tattoos. Really? Why? Why, why tattoos? There's just something so permanent about it. <laughs> permanent? permanent? So she don't think getting a gender change is permanent? Yeah, you know, it's crazy to say that. Some elderly, some elderly are childish too. They have childlike mindset. Some of them do. Oh, it's God. pretty permanent. It's very difficult to get them lasered off or removed. You don't think it's like permanent to change your gender? <laughs> See, you look probably look at me and you think all old people are wise, but unfortunately, no. Since you said that you don't remember somebody crying, I think you forgot about this young lady. I think you might have forgot about her. Let's see if you remember her. Let's see if you remember her. Let's see if you remember this lady. <laughs> In the background, another signal that for all of that resistance, for all of that opposition, Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. <laughs> so, just so like I said, we keep things fair and balanced. Uh, you said you don't remember. I, I, I'm pretty sure you remember okay. the young lady who screamed okay. to the high heaven of Trump. So yeah, we keep it fair over here, man. We keep it Okay. Well, hold on. Since you said So this is just proof that they they always scream when he win. They always have meltdowns when he win. It's weird. Because the first time he won, I never really paid attention to it. Look at this. You're seeing these big crowds of people leaving yep. Harris headquarters. I mean, again, you know, she is not going to be speaking. You understand why they're leaving. But this is a bit of a, a symbol here for the state of the race right now. Right. Well, the fact that she's not speaking tonight is a symbol of the state yes. of the race. Yeah, right? yes. Eighty percent of the black population make up the Democratic Party, man. And with that being said, I just feel like the Democratic Party is a Democratic plantation. Yes. Joe Biden couldn't let Kamala have this moment. This was supposed to be his moment. This was supposed to be his close. Yep. And look what he did. He wouldn't let her have it. And this guy's been ruminating about the coup for months. Can't get over it. He's a resentful old man who now Kamala has a restraining order. She's not allowed to go anywhere near this guy. He was within walking distance of this speech. Didn't get a ticket. Ever since he said lock Trump up, they haven't, they've been quarantining him at the White House. So he House. was upset that she was on his lawn. So she was <laughs> on his lawn, no get off lawn. My, my lawn. lawn. What is she gonna do now? Everyone's talking about this. Oh, let's say the nice things. Okay, here are the nice things. Her hair looked great, I agree. Uh, the lighting was perfect, but I have sources there that said she walked out on the stage and no one cared. And my source is Johnny. He was at the Ellipse, <laughs> and Johnny's she's talking about there was 100,000 <laughs> people there. He said there was 30. And you know how they got 30, Tyrus? Buses. Bus lists. Wow. He overheard these Facts. two women talking Facts. about, are you on Facts. the bus list? Oh, I'm on the bus list. And so what they do, if you're a government worker in Washington, you get on a bus list, they have your cell, they have your address, and then you just say yes, and then the buses come in and they pick you up and they bring you to political rallies. Wow, I didn't even know that. So all of those people were basically forced to go to that rally well that 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 concession speech and 
Joe Biden has got a, a, a restraining order on this lady? Damn, talk about a slap in her face. Man, I kind of feel bad for her now. There is no cheating. There's no smoke to it. People say things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. We've learned this in 2020. Do you know any specifics oh, of the oh, allegations? Hold on, hold on one second. So as I said in my social media post, there is... They cheated so bad in 2020, right? That even if Trump cheated this year, they couldn't say it because it'll be like the tables are turning on them and then it would have to go back and prove that they cheated. They don't want that. So they gave it to him fair and square. They know he won it fair and square. No truth to the allegation that there is massive cheating in Philadelphia. We have been in touch with the RNC and anybody who has any complaints throughout the day, we've been responsive. Everything has been handled appropriately. So we look forward to the continued voting until 8 p.m. when the polls close. We also have ballots that still need to be counted inside the warehouse. And I think it's a beautiful thing that we, we were able to keep the integrity of this this, this election man because that was a that was up for, for question uh in 2020 there is it currently a florida law uh that bans abortion after six weeks and there is a ballot measure that would reverse that where do you stand on the issue well i think it's got to be longer than six weeks personally i've done a great job in this for the people they wanted to get it back in the states they wanted to vote of the people all democrats wanted it all Republicans wanted it, everybody, and I'm a believer in the exceptions. That's life of the mother, rape and incest, and I believe strongly that, as Ronald Reagan and others have, and most of the party does. But no, I think uh, it's got to be longer than six weeks. See, everybody was saying that he was going to ban abortions. No, he was going to regulate it. Because as you can see, he's saying right here he believes in the exceptions. What he's saying is, if you're great, or if, if, if the baby is going to cause some type of harm to your health and you can't go through with the pregnancy. Over here on my right is what a normal light should look like, right? That's the kind of lighting. But across Phoenix, we are seeing this instead, more purple lights showing up. We're told about 1,200 of these lights started popping up a couple of months ago in the city. That's out of about 100,000 total lights in Phoenix. You may have seen them lately on your evening commute. Street lights across the state that are glowing blue. And the Iowa DOT says it's an issue they are aware of. That's right, Patrick. When they were first installed over a year ago, they were a normal white color. Now, as you can see here behind me, they've changed to a purple-blue color. The lights really are different colors. Some white, some a purple, even blue hue. Sixteen months ago, they gave off the normal white light, but within a year, their true colors started shining through. Purple street lights that are still illuminating some roads right here in the triad. These purple street lamps have seen the light of day or night on many roads in the Carolinas, from Kernersville to Greensboro, Burlington, and beyond. Now, part of me want to say that they did this because of the mosquitoes, right? But another part of me is wants to say that maybe it's to kind of keep us from seeing certain things, if you get what I'm saying. You've got literally just a group, and maybe a director knows about it, nobody else. It's completely classified, it's top secret, it's, on, it's under lock and key. But I want to mention something. One of the bombshells that we dropped was that there's a declassified federal document Anyone watching this interview can go find this document. It's on the FBI vault. Uh, document 6751, it's a document from the 40s. It was written by a prominent member of academia and it was submitted to the FBI. In this document, they make a case that entities are not space aliens, but that they're interdimensional or extra dimensional entities that are crossing over from a plane known as the ethereal plane. Now we know uh, as, as researchers of the New Age movement, we know that that is where the Ascended Masters are supposedly said to be on a high level. This ethereal plane is very popular uh, You know, when you talk to people who astral project, people who channel, mm -hmm. people who remote view, people who want to tap in or go on a trip, an ayahuasca trip, a DMT trip. Correct. These are very covert weapons, aren't they? That's correct. Um, there's no entry or exit wound. How they're designed is to make the target feel like they're crazy. 
like they're imagining things. And you guys also said that these attacks are happening right here in this city, is that correct? I mean, there have been some that have gone public with respect to Washington, D.C. I think it was Mr. U Mr. Grozov said uh, you spoke to a Russian agent who said that they believe that Americans are using these same weapons on them. Is that correct? That is correct. Might that have something to do um, with part of the CIA's motive to cover up the existence of the, this tech and these weapons? That is a very logical possibility. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman yields. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Goldman, for his round of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here. Um, Mr. Grozov, I want to follow up a little bit on the interactions you've had with Russian intelligence. Man, this ain't nothing new. The mind control stuff is just advanced now. MK Ultra been out for years. Let's look at some of the conspiracy theories of fraud. We'll take them one at a time. Bogus votes are electronically inserted into tabulation machines. They're not connected to the internet. They are under strict physical chain of custody. It is really hard to get access to a physical machine and do anything to it. And even if there were some attempt to hack the machine or probably more likely have some kind of malfunction of the machine, the audits would catch it. Another of the conspiracy theories is that illegal immigrants were voting by the millions. Uh, that is 100% false. Every single voter has to give a driver's license number or a social security number, which is matched against uh, files, databases that are held to make sure the voter is who they say they are and they're eligible to vote. And we also know that states who have gone looking for non-citizens voters have found shockingly few even potential non-citizen registrants. Ohio uh, just recently announced that in a period of time of over a decade, it had found six possible cases of non-citizens voting. But fraud does happen, doesn't it? It happens very rarely. Um, we know how much fraud in this country happens. We know it's not zero, but it's very, very close to zero. We're not talking about millions of votes or hundreds of thousands of votes. No, we're talking about dozens of votes in a big national election. It is, for all intents and purposes, impossible to steal a big national election. We are so decentralized with almost 10,000 different jurisdictions run by Democratic and Republican election officials. Our voter lists are as accurate as they ever have been before and they're checked regularly. Well, thank the most high for that. Because you know they were starting to report that there was people who didn't even know their address down at the polls voting. I don't know what they was trying to do, but if they voted for Trump, well, God bless them. Well, I'm gonna win in this election. It's no accident. This is divine. God knew that by default the world wouldn't elect a woman to lead. So he set it up in the most surreal way possible. Tomorrow, just remember this video. Bookmark it and come back to it after it happens. She's going to be the next president of the United States. Right. Whether people like it or not. She'll bring a new kind of leadership, mm -hmm. one rooted in compassion and unity. Right. This is no one but God. Wow. So I texted my baby daddy this morning and asked him if he voted and if he did vote, who did he vote for? And his response was, I have two black daughters. Who the fuck do you think I voted for? Tight shit. And that right there gave me a little bit of relief that I did not reproduce with a fucking idiot. Okay. A complete idiot. Whatever. But I'm going to be nice to him for the rest of the year. Okay. For right. It's about to be lights out for Donald Trump in Pennsylvania. What is that? A new... So they thought. So they thought. They from Univision and YouGov showed that Kamala Harris has a 34% lead uh -huh. over Donald Trump. Right. 64 to 30. Ew. When Kamala wins tomorrow, I want everybody to go get a celebratory silk press. Girls, guys, days, then. We can still get it. I just ain't got no, ain't got no hair. She ain't winning. Trump supporters thought they had this in the bag. But look at these numbers. He's still going down. She's still going up. Type shit. So my mom casually reaches out to me like, hey, you know, did you vote? Your brothers voted. Um, they voted for Trump. I need people to know that whether you blood, family, we close friends. If you're a Trump supporter of any kind. Okay. I want nothing to do with you. Most of the people in the country? Facts, facts. Mm -hmm. 
That's weird. Why you got the lights off? He really like didn't turn the light on when he walked in the room because he needed that video to be dramatic. That was crazy. I'm literally contemplating my entire marriage right now. Right. Because my wife voted. My wife voted for Donald J. <gasps> The lesbian. No way. No way. That was just a little highlight reel I wanted y'all to see. <laughs> I'm gonna win in this election. It's no accident. This is divine. God knew that by default the world wouldn't elect a woman to lead. So he set it up in the most surreal way possible. Tomorrow, just remember this video. Bookmark it and come back to it after it happens. She's going to be the next president of the United States. Right. Whether people like it or not. She'll bring a new kind of leadership, mm -hmm. one rooted in compassion and unity. Right. This is no one but God. What happened? The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition. Last night, I congratulated Donald Trump and offered to work with him on behalf of our country. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every Every walk of life and background. We've spent a year and a half bringing together millions of people from every corner of our country to say with one voice that we believe that the American dream is big enough for everyone. To the young people who are watching, it is okay to feel sad and disappointed, but please know it's going to be okay. To the young people in particular, I hope you will hear this. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. This loss hurts, but please never stop believing that fighting for what's right is worth it. The outcome of this election is not what we want. See? Pra practically the same damn speech. Few words switched up, but it's pra practically the same thing. Donald Trump just won the presidency and he's already putting his foot down. Trump is telling Benjamin Netanyahu that he wants the war over before he goes into office. And it's going to be done too, because remember, Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump do not like each other. They both have big egos, but Donald Trump has all the leverage in this relationship between the two countries. So the war in the Middle East and the war in Eastern Europe are both going to be over now. And if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had the ability to say no just a little bit, they probably would not have lost that election. But here's one thing I really do worry about. Trump is not going to be in office till January 6th. Joe Biden and all those who influence him have two more months in office. So these next two months might be very bad for the people in Gaza. And I do worry about that because now there's no political restraint and no political repercussions. So it's completely overboard. Israel and Ukraine's demands from Joe Biden were this past year. They might actually become worse in the next two months because in two more months, Netanyahu's not gonna have the same influence on America anymore. And one last thing real quick is that, hey, Anthony Blinken, you're fired. Y'all see that? Y'all already letting him know. <laughs> but before I set foot, when Trump a gangster, he a big old gangster. Before I set foot in that White House, hey, you better straighten up. You better get it right. That's how he coming, man. That's how he coming. That's what he says. The charity and events are now recognized that it's been the hand of God leading me to where I am today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bro, I don't know if it's me, but Trump has changed so much, man. I feel like he actually had an encounter with God, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. And my faith took on new meaning on July 13th in Butler, Pennsylvania. Oh. Where I was... Uh, Knocked to the ground, essentially, by what seemed like a uh, supernatural hand. A 
Amen. Preach. And I would like to think that God saved me for a purpose, and that's to make our country greater than ever before. Well, you know what? I wasn't going to vote, but Trump, I'm voting now. I told y'all it was ordained. What is going on right now? China just announced that it hopes for a peaceful coexistence with the United States and that they respect the choice of the American people. Hold on, bro. So you telling me the second that Donald Trump gets elected, all of a sudden China want to send out good favors and good conversation. When it's really been like a cold war between us, China, and Russia for like Biden's whole term for real. And in general, of course, but yo, it was really crazy during that time. And this is the thing that I'd be confused about. Now, I'm not a Republican and I don't support either party, but I think people should take note that the Democrats are very war hungry. And they're very blood hungry. They are constantly at odds and at wars with the superpowers across the world, bro. The Democrats are just very good at making it sound good to you. But they be doing the same thing the Republicans do. They're just way more Machiavellian. There ain't no way you telling me the second Donald Trump gets elected, all of a sudden, the other superpower in the world wants to peacefully coexist. And if that isn't feedback for you for the way that Biden ran his term and Kamala aided him, I don't know what is, bro. He said everything I wanted to say. Watch this economics professor explain Trump's tariffs. Well, the income tax currently costs the American people $2.4 trillion a year. Trump proposes to replace it with tariffs of 20% on everybody but China who gets an extra special 60% tariff. Altogether, that might bring in about $900 billion a year. This would grow America's economy like rocket fuel. In the near term, we're talking a 20% increase in the economy, so about a $15,000 raise for the typical American family. Note that's on top of the $18,000 of income tax you would no longer have to pay. Knock off 3000 for the tariffs and you get about 30000 in additional income for the typical American family, close to 3000 per month. We might expect a doubling of annual economic growth. So 5% growth would be the new normal. Your kids would be three times richer than you as it used to work in America. If we simply copy countries like Singapore, we might save around about $2 trillion or more. If a president can sell it to American voters, 30000 is a chunk of change, Congress will go along out of sheer self-preservation. Plus, the bake sales would be lit. That's economics professor Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD, explaining exactly how replacing the income tax with tariffs would help all of Americans, especially middle and lower class Americans. Of course, the elite wouldn't want us getting 30,000 extra dollars a year and securing our wealth for our children. Doesn't that sound like it would make America great again? Because that's what it sounds like to me. And if voting for Trump gives me any shot at accessing the opportunities my parents had access to, economically speaking, then yeah, I'm going to vote for him. Trump 2024. Hey, I'm all for the tariffs, especially if I get an extra $30,000, bro. So one of the promises Trump made to us was that once he's elected, he will end the war within 24 hours. Well, guess what? He won the election and within 24 hours, Hamas calls for an immediate end to war after Trump election win. We told you guys, all these countries around the world, they didn't respect us. Once they saw the Afghanistan pull out failure, they knew that they could do whatever they wanted. They saw weakness, they saw blood in the water. But now that the big boys are back, now that the real man is back, Donald J. Trump, everyone's gonna start calling for peace. Promises made, promises kept within 24 hours. Trump has ended the Hamas-Israel war. Now, when he's in office, let's see if he can end the Ukraine-Russia war within 24 hours. So thank you, Trump. Peace through strength. God bless Trump. So what are the problems? I'm just saying, everybody's doing videos about this. So you know, at this point, it's not a lie, okay? People want peace. Not, not only have they wanted peace, they have been wanting peace they just didn't like the people who were in power who knows what they were doing over there at those u.n meetings man who knows what 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 biden and, and harris were doing and saying he already didn't know how to speak well so he probably rubbed them the wrong way so much to the point where they like you know what we just not gonna speak with y'all anymore 
Donald Trump is against a national ban on abortion. So you wouldn't support a national ban? No, I wouldn't support a national ban. No, I would not. And Donald Trump is in favor of the exceptions. And like Ronald Reagan, I'm a believer in the exceptions, the three exceptions, as you know and uh, rape incest life of the mother the supreme court's ruling in dobbs versus jackson women's health organization which overturned roe v wade removed federal protection for abortion and left the decisions up for the individual states to decide this happened in 2022 this means that kamala has been the sitting vice president for two years and has done nothing about this and to be honest she can't do anything about this because a bill to reinstate federally protected abortions would never pass with the republican congress and also donald trump has nothing to do with project 2025 I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Trump has nothing to do with Project 2025. And if Donald Trump is a racist, which many people think he is, to be honest, he's really bad at it. He won the Ellis Island Award for, quote, patriotism, diversity, inclusion, and brotherhood alongside Muhammad Ali and Rosa Parks. He provided more funding for historically black colleges and universities than any other president. He created the lowest unemployment rate for African American, Asian American, and Hispanic Americans in the history of the United States. He also signed the First Step Act. This legislation reform sentencing laws that have wrongfully and disproportionately harmed the african-american community this was regarded as the most significant criminal justice reform legislation in years but the truth is you've been lied to i mean just think about it for a second the media and hollywood just 10 years ago they all loved donald trump and then he ran for president and all of a sudden they all turned on him like why might that be the case why does the press cover him so unfairly did he wake up one morning and decide that he was going to be evil or was it because the people who run hollywood and run the media i'll tell you why when you're so good and when you're so pure and when you're so honest and when you're truly for your country and for the people it affects the plans that the evil had so they have to paint you as the evil person because that's what evil people do realize they couldn't control him now look does trump say mean things yes but he's a strong leader that other world leaders respect and right now with wars in the middle east and in europe north korea forming an alliance with russia a crumbling economy high inflation an invasion at the southern border a drug and mental health crisis a chronic disease epidemic and the u.s hurling towards bankruptcy we need a strong leader right now kamala is not a strong leader she can't even do an unscripted and unedited interview so what's going to happen when putin or xi jinping comes calling it's not gonna be good. The future of the world is in our hands today. We have to vote to save democracy, to save America, and to save the world. We have to vote for Donald Trump. And for my future voters that's watching, if you didn't vote this year, and you're planning on voting the next time, these are the things you need to watch out. Really, it's just one thing. If they have to use a teleprompter, don't vote for them. So all this time you mean to tell me our 44th president real name is Barry Satoro? What is going on? Oh my word! Yeah, bro, if you just find that out, I don't know what to tell you. Because, uh, yeah, the birth certificate came out a long time ago. Trump will bring on a recession the second he takes power. You need to understand something. Economic news has not been getting reported the way that it should for the past three and a half years. We are not okay, and it's about to all be blamed on him. Understand that I support Trump. I voted for Trump, but things are about to sound very scary. We of the American people have not been hearing true economic news. I'll give you an example. In 2022, we had more banks closed as far as the size of them than what happened in 2008, but it didn't get reported that way. Now, when I say we're heading into a recession, a lot of you will say, well, man, things are already bad. Grocery prices are already high. Rent prices are already high. I get that. That's inflation. Trump's a deflationary president, which is why I would say right now I would not buy a home. I would not buy a car. I would not buy a boat. I would not buy anything. I would wait. Things are going to sound very scary. They already should sound very scary, but they haven't because the news has not been reporting against Bidenomics. They're going to blame it all on Trump. He'll be able to handle it, but it's going to sound scary for a bit. With his deflation, Things are going to drop. Home prices are going to drop. Many things are going to drop. We're going to be in a much better scenario. Just understand through that, there's going to be some job loss and some other things that are going to happen. So between now and then, things are going to sound a little bit different. They're going to sound as they should have for the past three and a half years, and they're going to try to blame it all on him. Trump will bring on a recession the second he takes power. I believe that, but because of what's happening beforehand, I think people won't fall for it as easy. This is a mandate. He's won the national popular vote uh, for the first time since, for a Republican, for the first time since 2004. Um, this is a big deal. 
Uh, this isn't backing into the office. This is a mandate to do what you said you were going to do. Get the economy working again for regular working class Americans. Fix immigration. Try to get crime under control. Try to reduce the chaos in the world. This, this is a mandate from the American people to do that. I think I'm interpreting the results tonight as the revenge of just the regular old working class American, the anonymous American who has been crushed, insulted, condescended to. They're not garbage. They're not Nazis. They're just regular people who get up and go to work every day and are trying to make a better life for their kids. And they feel like they have been told to just shut up when they have complained about the things that are hurting them in their own lives. I also feel like this election, as we sit here and pour over this tonight, is something of an indictment of the political information complex. I mean, we've been sitting around here for the last couple of weeks, and the story that was portrayed was not true. I mean, we were told Puerto Rico was going to change the election. Liz Cheney, Nikki Haley voters, women lying to their husbands. Before that, it was Tim Walls and the camo hats. Night after night after night, we were told all these things and gimmicks were going to somehow push Harris over the line. And we were just ignoring the fundamentals. Inflation, people feeling like that they were barely able to tread water at best. That was the fundamentals of the election. And so I think that both parties should always look at the results of an election and figure out what went right and what went wrong. But I think for all of us who cover elections and talk about elections and do this on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to figure out how to understand, talk to, and listen to the half of the country that rose up tonight and said, we've had enough. Since we're talking about uh, the world and the fate of it, we should consider the op-ed you recently wrote, which talked about how elections here in America are about more than just America. And I think it raises the question of what you would like to know more when it comes to Kamala Harris's approach to the world, her philosophy, and if you don't know enough already, Donald Trump's. Well, on the issues that uh, my foundation works on, climate change, you know, generosity, continuing the HIV uh, medicines that have saved tens of millions of lives. There's a pretty strong contrast, you know, between the candidates. Uh, one would continue those programs and the other one doesn't, doesn't even see uh, climate change as, as a real thing. Mm. Since we're talking about uh, the world and the fate of it, we should consider the op-ed you recently wrote, which talked about how elections here in America are about more than just America. And I think it raises the question of what you would like to know more when it comes to Kamala Harris's approach to the world, her philosophy, and if you don't know enough already, Donald Trump's. Well, on the issues that uh, my foundation works on, climate change, you know, generosity, continuing the HIV uh, medicines that have saved tens of millions of lives. There's a pretty strong contrast, you know, between the candidates. Uh, one would continue those programs and the other one doesn't, doesn't even see uh, climate change as, as a real thing. Mm. Since we're talking about uh, the world and the fate of it, we mm. should consider the op-ed. Yeah, I told you. He wanted her to win so he can continue his operation. He just blankly said it right then and there. I'm just saying, look at all of these people that are ready to sit down with your boy, man. They're like, look, we want peace. Women who can divorce their husbands, I'm going to need you to do it today. And who can't divorce their husbands, look up Aqua Tofana. <laughs> I didn't say to do anything with it. Being a black man in America, bro, one thing I realized is we're hated more by our own women than any other person on this planet. This woman is telling women to either divorce their husbands or poison their husband. Aqua Tofana is a poison that you can put in food and drinks to people. She's telling women to exterminate their husband because they voted for Trump. What the fuck? Listen, it's not all black women, but it's a lot of them. I'm going to say majority. The post has 102,000 likes and 7,000 saves. Come on, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like they say, all black men hate black women. No, 
I've never seen a black man say this about a black woman ever. Black women hate their own men, bro, period. They need therapy, bro. They need Jesus, bro. I, I promise you, I'm not even playing. Well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. As a black man, I'm a married black man, so I don't really have to deal with all that right there. But my sons, as black young men, have to deal with that. So, yeah, that's a whole nother ball game that we got to deal with. I told you it's crazy to the point where they want to off their own husbands or offering tips on how to off your husband if you can't divorce him. Why you need to divorce him? Because he has a different outlook or a different political stance that you and you knew this before marrying this person. I would think you knew this, right? Because ain't nobody getting with nobody without knowing their political stance, what they believe in, what they think, you know, their moral, their moral compass, right? Turns out, and these people that are telling women to do this, they aren't married. They don't even have men. They can't even keep a man for a month. They are the problems, and maybe they need to be exterminated. How about them apples? Now, I didn't say nobody need to be killed. Because extermination can mean anything. It's to get rid of, and getting rid of could actually mean they'll make a move to another country. But just maybe. Maybe they do need to go to another country. Maybe they need to go to the island of Lesbos. If you know, you know. And let's see what happens to them in another 50 to 100 years. And it also begs the question. I have nothing against homosexual people but if homosexuality was right if we put 50,000 women on one island and 50,000 men on one island 50 to 100 years what do you think is gonna happen if it's the right thing to do right if 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 procreation and and being with a man being with a woman is the not right thing to do what do you think would happen I'll leave y'all with that question. I could rant, but I won't. And with that being said, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description and follow all of my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person. And if you want to see more dope videos, Click on my last video.